everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, man, bang, man, he dropped Priest, and Priest's cigarette went everywhere. <laughs> Priest hit the ground, and man, I felt sorry for him, man. He fell down between the door and the trash can. And man, Bolo got on top of him, man, and just started pounding him, man. Bang, 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 bang. I mean, man, it, it was vicious, man. And Priest was unconscious too, man. Bolo, I'm telling you, man, that boy got a one hit quit. I ain't never really ever seen him in a whole tussle because normally when he hit a dude, that's a rap. That's a rap. And he usually hits you when you unaware. He not he walk up to you, smile, yo, <laughs> yeah, bang. And it made you leery when you around him because you don't know what his thought process is. And man, Bolo hit priest, man. And man, it was it was vicious, man. It was mean. He got down on him, man. He was pounding the man, just beating him. And dudes was even telling him, man, he said, Bolo, man, that's enough, man, that's enough. <laughs> no, he wanted <a> joke. <laughs> and, and, and he just Man, he, he punished Priest, man. They had to take Priest out there to the hospital. Bolo beat him, to, man, he almost beat him to death. They locked Bolo up. <laughs> I ain't seen Bolo again for years, man. Bolo is, every time I'm around him, that's what it be. That's what it be. He, he ended up beating somebody real bad, and he ended up, you know, going to a high level. And, you don't see him for years later till he come back down or he go in segregation for years and you don't run into him for years later. Years later, you know, but that's his whole M.O. Dudes know that about him. So I be surprised when dudes get to joking and playing with him and stuff. And I think Bolo personality kind of throw him off a little bit where they think they can joke and play with him because he a laugh and joke. He a fun, he a fun dude. He a jovial guy. He a laugh and joke, but he just don't want the joke and laughs to be about him. <laughs> if they're about him, he gonna take it personal. You know what I'm saying? And another thing is he love he love that wine, man. He love that liquor in there. When dudes make that liquor, and you know he a Muslim, so he don't supposed to be drinking. But he a drink, and he be sneaking and drinking. And when once he get drunk, man, he a whole different animal, man. He a whole different animal. He a more aggressive. He, he, he talk more trash, you know, he more vocal. And then, like I say, whatever room he be in, his voice is going to take over the room. My voice ain't deep enough to actually give y'all the way he talk, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good today, man. What's going on, man? What, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah, baby, when they gonna let us go, baby? When they gonna let us go, man? Yeah. That's a bolo, man, you all right? Man, I'm excellent. <laughs> I'm feeling good, baby. You know, I'm just tired of the penitentiary. Tired of being up here in the penitentiary, man. I need to get out there on the street, man. Yeah, you know. When you go up up the road, man? When you go up? You been up this year? No, man, I ain't been up yet, man. I probably go up the second quarter. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. They keep turning me down, though, man. I don't know why, man. I don't know what they want. I don't know what they want out of me, man. I don't know what they want, man. You know, and he go on to the whole spiel. I just used to be sitting there talking to him, man. Yes and them all, laughing and whatnot, man. Bolo was just cut from a different club, man. Different type of dude. But when he feeling like that, and he been drinking and everything like that. If you pull up on him with some foolishness, <laughs> you better tuck your chin, man. You better tuck that chin because you might just get whopped. And when you get whopped, like I say, man, you dudes like him, he not going to show you no mercy, right? He not going to hit your boom and knock you out and you lay down and he just going about his business. Nah, he going to get on top of you and give you the business. Hint, hint, hint. 
you know, that's what he gonna do. Cause every time he get an altercation, I guess he trying to send a message. This is what you gonna get if you fool with me. You feel me? And you got dudes like that in prison, man. I've met a lot of them. Bolo is just the one that I'm talking about now, but that's the way he carried. He's always aggressive. He's always gonna talk loud. He don't care. He had no problem with whoever it is, the police, a gang member, young dude, old dude. He not gonna be disrespected in, in, in his perspective of disrespect. What we may consider disrespect may be completely different than what he considered disrespect. But if he feel disrespected, he gonna address it. And nine times out of 10, he gonna address it in a physical manner. You see what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I didn't run into him for years later, man. And when I ran into him years later, <laughs> The same M.O. was still in effect. He won't do no games. He won't do no playing. I, I spoke about this one time on one of my other videos. I think it was a Greensville video. But I ran into him again. I was on Greensville. And um, he was on that joint. And he was on the yard, man, which was surprising to me to hear. You know, came from the high level already from the priest situation. And he was on the yard, man. He was doing good, man. He was doing good. He was working out every day. He on his day. He going to Juma. You know, that's a religious service. He going to Juma every week. You know, he praying. And um, he on his day, man. But like I told you, it only takes something small. Something small, something slight, man. Something slight. And I remember he had uh, he had um, had some words with this dude. We was on Greensville. And you had a dude on there named Greensville. I think he was from like Greens, Greensville, North Carolina, or something like that. But they called him Greensville. And he was a he was a formidable dude. He had big sides on him and everything. But somewhere, somehow, him and Bolo got into some type of debate, right? The debate ended up being an argument, right? And the argument ended up being a beef. Now they don't like each other. One I'm saying, well, don't say nothing else to me, man. I'm through with that. And Greenville is more or less like, man, who is you? I say anything I want to say, man. You don't tell me what to say, when to say, man. Who you think you talk to? Bolo like, I told you. I somebody better tell him. I told him, man. Leave me alone, man. Don't say nothing else to me. Period. Rest of the time you're on this institution, don't say nothing else to me. He stayed around his mouth, not knowing ain't nobody pull his coat. Man, you, you, man, I say what I want to who I want, man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't nobody, man. You a man just like I'm a man, man. You respect me like I respect you. I don't, you can't tell me what to do. Woo, woo, woo. And I heard these type of conversations in prison more times than I can count. You know, somebody trying to do, do this, do that, say that, and then people trying to hold their ground. Because like I say, we in an environment where weakness is, 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 a, is a liability, man. You know, meekness. Not weak, but meek. Weak and meek. Meek. M-E-E-K. Meekness is a liability in prison. Because dudes won't allow you to be meek. Because they're going to take it for a week. And they're going to try you. One way or another. So aggression is the only way to go in prison. And like I told you too, Violence is a universal language. People don't know what you're talking about, where you're coming from, who you are. They understand violence. You know, and it's sad, but it's true, but that's a way of life in prison. And you know, it's a way of life in real life, but people just don't acknowledge it. They don't do that much thought process to it. But you can be an American and only speak English, and you can go to a Singapore and don't nobody speak no English at all. And you trying to explain what you what you trying to explain, and they have no knowledge of what you're saying. But if you ball your fists up, they understand that you mean business, or that you mean to hurt them, or you mean to harm them. So violence is a universal language that everybody understands. And in penitentiary, violence is the number one uh uh uh, uh what you call it? <laughs> the number one language. <laughs> That's number one. I know in America they say it's English, but in prison is is violence. That's the number one language in prison. That's the language that everybody understands. No matter what walk of life you come from, no matter what color you are, no matter what, period. You know, COs down to, to inmates, to convicts, everybody understands violence. And when you got a propensity 
or, 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 or an appetite to create violence, then people are going to listen to what you got to say. Because you're going to make them. They're going to have to. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, ain't nobody pull this coat to who Bolo was, obviously. So they had a little spout and they little spouting or whatever, whatever. So we go out on the yard that evening and <laughs> they walking around the track, man. We walk the track. A lot of dudes walk the track out there. What they call the track is the yard where they've got a big jogging, a, a jogging uh, path on the outer perimeter of the yard. You know what I'm saying? The middle of the yard is there, everybody out there playing kickball, volleyball, baseball, softball, horseshoes, whatever the case may be. And then you got a lot of dudes be jogging around the track. And then you got some dudes just be walking around the track. So, evidently, uh, Greensville was walking around the track this way and Bolo was coming this way. So, they just had the argument earlier, you know, and Bolo still got on his brain. Greensville done dismissed the whole argument as, is, you know, it ain't nothing. I spoke my piece, you know what it is, he ain't, he ain't messing with me. Yeah, I stood my ground, blah, 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 whatever his thought process may be. I'm guessing, I'm not in his brain, you know. Well, whatever his thought process was, it wasn't enough. Because he didn't process the fact that you need to be aware of this dude right here. Because <laughs> this dude right here is dangerous. And as they coming towards each other on the yard... And Bolo is walking and he walking. I guess he look up, he see Bolo, Bolo see him. And to my understanding, Bolo hit him, was like, look here, man, let me all at you. And he was like, what's up? Boom! And Bolo hit him, dropped him. He fall down, man, he hit the ground, he unconscious. You know, always Bolo one hit a quitter will <laughs> put you to sleep. Bolo got on top of that man and sat in his chest. And I did not actually see this, but I heard from a great source. I saw the aftermath, not the initial contact. Bolo sat in that man's chest, man, and beat that man face in, man, like it was a punching bag. A punching bag. Man, that man was so bloody and so disfigured that it didn't even make no sense. Bolo's hands was bloody, shirt was bloody, and Bolo got tired of hitting him so much. Bang! Bang, bang. And dudes were scared to stop him. Literally scared to stop because they didn't know why he might respond. Bolo finished and got up off the man and started walking the yard, man, wiping blood off of him and everything. And the boy was laying there, in there shaking. Unconscious shaking, face beat to a pulp, you know, disfigured and everything. When the police finally found out, which they don't, didn't even see none of that. None of that. Pay attention, young fellas. This is how safe you are in prison. We on the yard. They got tower, gun towers and everything where the police supposed to be watching the yard. They got a dude over here at the uh, at the gate. He's supposed to be watching the yard. They saw none of that. None of that, man. The dude was laying down in the, in, 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 on the ground, dying, fighting for his life. And if it don't be for somebody who go tell the police, man, you got somebody out there hurt on the yard and need some medical attention. The man probably would have died, man. He probably would have died. Bolo would have walked around and wiped himself off or whatever, whatever. They come out there, they see the dude, man. They shut the yard down, close, get everybody off the yard. They had to helicopter that man to the hospital, man, to save his life. To save his life with just these. That's Bolo. You understand me? That's Bolo. They ended up running the camera because they got cameras on the yard too. They determined, figured out it was Bolo. They locked Bolo up. I don't see him again, just like I told y'all for years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For years. You know, because he go and pay that price. But he the type of dude that know the consequences. He know the price he gonna have to pay. But at the same time, he gonna do it anyway. He gonna do it anyway. If, it, if that's what his hand called for, boom, that's what it's gonna be. Bolo could just get out of jail and have somebody messing with him. And he gonna take care of his business and go right back to jail as if it ain't nothing. And then if you ask, do he like being back in second day, he gonna say, no, nah, man. Man, I was starving back there, man. Because he a big dude, he like to eat. Man, I lost 40 pounds this time, man. 40 pounds, man, look at me, man. I lost 40 pounds, man. I gotta get back on the weight pal, man. 
I be like, Bolo, man, you gotta slow down, man. You gotta take your time, bro. These dudes don't want that type of beef, man. No, 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 no. Well, they need to be more respectful. They need to be more respectful when they talking to me, man. Hey, you, you, are, you know I ain't going for anything. You ain't gonna say no anything to me and then just be walking around here like that. You know I ain't going for that, but I ain't gonna do it to him. That's how he gonna come at you. Straight up like that, he ain't going for it. You know what I'm saying? He just, he, he's, a, he's, out, he, he's out there, man. He's out there. And there's many dudes like that in prison. Bolo is just one, but he is a dangerous one. Trust and believe that. Yeah, trust and believe that, man. Bolo is, uh, he cut from a different cloth, man. And there he was, off again, man. I ain't run into him for years, man. Years. And the next time I ran into him, man, I was in re-entry. I mean, not in re-entry. I was in Nottaway. I was coming from the mountains myself from uh, River North. I was coming from River North. I went to Nottaway where I eventually made parole. But he was doing good on there, man. He was doing good on there. I seen him. First time I seen him, man, he was all happy to see me. Hey, Mike, hey. Man, yeah, somebody told me you came on here. What's up, man? Boom, boom, we dap up and everything. I'm like, what's up with you, baby? Man, what's going on, baby? You know what I'm saying? What's happening? Man, you already know. I'm just chilling. Glad to be from out the mountains, man. I was like, yeah, you was up here. Yeah, man. I ain't see him because at the time I was at Wallace Ridge, he was at Red Onion. By the time I got to River North, he was at Wallace Ridge. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know how he got out of the way for me, but he ended up getting there before me, and I ended up running into him. But he was cool, man. He was on his days, man. I'm on my day, man. I'm just, you know, he greets Oscar Lumber Legum, baby. You know, and, and he, on his, he on his Muslim thing. And he trying to stay out of trouble because he want to get out of the penitentiary like everybody else in the penitentiary. Everybody in the penitentiary want to get out the penitentiary. So y'all young fellas that's already out here, you already have everything that everybody in there want. Freedom. Freedom. Don't give it up. They want that, you know, because it ain't no life in there, man. It ain't nothing going on in there but foolishness, chaos, and viciousness. Period. That's it. On a day-to-day -day basis. Who want to live like that? Who? I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. If I would have been knowledgeable when I was younger I, and knew what was going on in there, it ain't no way in the world I would choose that type of life. Ain't no way in the world I would put myself in a position to make the mistakes that I made knowing that this would be the end result. And this is what I'm trying to preach to y'all, man. Y'all got y'all, y'all winning out here, man. You winning. You think you not because everything ain't the way you want it to be. But in actuality, you winning, man. You winning, don't 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 get kicked out the game. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you, on the other side, it's not a it's not a joke, bro. It is not a joke whatsoever. Please believe me, man. So you know, like I say, he was doing his thing. At that time, Pedo was up there, my man Pedo. Shout out to Pedo. So you know, I'm on out of way. I'm I'm working out, man. I'm trying to get back into my workout, man. Trying to get back in that frame of mind. So me and Pedo used to be on the way pal every day, working out. Bolo coming out there. Walking all slow. What's up, man? What y'all doing today? What y'all doing? Curls? Y'all doing bench? Y'all doing chest? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give me some chest in. And he go over there, he's strong as a bull. Lift anything that he wanna lift. Don't let the stomach fool. He had a big old belly, but all this is big, all this is strong. The man is strong, man. And he got big old hands like, you know, catch a mitt. And. <laughs> Bang, when he hits you, night, night, man, straight up. And, you know, excuse me, like I said, I was on there with him. He was doing good. I was seeing him two, three, four times a week. Come out there on the way, pal, get his little work in, do his little thing. But I, I was I was thinking, man, you know, like I said, he done slowed down because we all getting older in the penitentiary. You know, these been years and decades. We getting older, man. This lifestyle, this thing and play it out. I think in my mind by now most dudes understand who Bolo is. Cause your reputation carries with you, it follows you. So if you a sucker, that sucker tag gonna follow you when you go to another institution. If you a 
a, 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 a killer that's gonna follow you when you go to the other institution. If you a knockout artist, it's gonna follow you when you go to another institution. So I'm figuring by the time Bolo would have been in prison all this time, even a young dude, somebody would pull their coat, man, let him know, look, man, leave that dude alone, man. Don't 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 look at him and think he old, think he fat or whatever. Man, the, the, <laughs> the man will mess your life up. I'm telling you, leave him alone. I'm thinking people would tell these people that, but man, you know, like I say, COs as well. The COs should know because they should, whatever you do in prison, man, it's gonna be in your file, right? They got a file on everybody in prison that only the administration is privy to. Whether you're a CO or, or a captain, a major, a warden, whatever, they're gonna be privy to your file so they're gonna know your history. They're gonna know what you will do, what you won't do. They're gonna know what you have done and what you have not done. So you can talk loud and act tough all you want. They're going to look at your paperwork and they're going to know who you are so they gonna, they should know how to handle you or how to deal with you. You know, evidently somebody ain't get the memo. <laughs> I told you I went on that thing in 214. I made parole in 2020. So what we talking, 14, 2020, talking about six years, right? Then I'm on this institution. And, um, Excuse me, it had been a couple of years that I had been on there with Bolo, and like I say, he was trouble free. He hadn't really got into nothing or nothing. I mentioned this too on one of my videos, I'm sure I did. Even though I've done so many of them now, I'm trying to remember what I have told y'all and I have not told y'all. So if I repeat, it's all good because it's all good, good content, man. But I remember. Uh, Bolo was going to the kitchen one day, and I told you when you go to the kitchen on the way, they call you by blocks and pause, and you go and eat, and you know, you file in, you file out. As we coming in, you got to go through a gate, and where they got two officers there that's gonna wanna pet you down or make sure you got your ID on your shirt, and ask you to pull your pants up, tie your shoes up, all this foolishness, like you in high school, young fellas. Or like your mom and daddy would tell you, young fellas that you don't want to listen to out here, put your pants up and all. They tell you that same thing in the penitentiary. Only difference is you can listen to your mom and daddy and your grandma and, and stuff out here and don't have to deal with it from people who don't care nothing about you. Because they don't care nothing about you. And if you don't do it in there, then they're going to penalize you for it or they're going to punish you for it. So you need to be listening to why you're out here. You know, so... Anyway, they coming through there one day, and that's how we got to go through all this procedures. Then when you go in the kitchen and come out, you got to get shook down or whatever, whatever. If you got a coat on, they want to check your coat, make sure you ain't stealing food out the kitchen. They want to check your coat when you coming in the gate, make sure you ain't bringing no contraband at Bethlehem or something to go in there to hurt somebody, or you bringing some type of drugs or transaction or food to trade with somebody. They want to check you for all that food. But they pick and choose who they check because... It's so many different people coming through out the gate during the day going to child. You're talking about 100 people, man, thousands of people. Or not thousands, but maybe 800, 900 people. So they want to check you, and they just spot checking and picking certain people. Well, one day this dude, man, one of the worst dudes on the boulevard, he always running his mouth, one of them COs, always running his mouth, always trying to be so hard, always trying to be so disrespectful, always looking down on you, feel like he above you and you beneath him because you incarcerate. So he picked Bolo, right? So he must not have got the memo. <laughs> he must not have got the memo because he picked Bolo one day. And when you in prison too, man, you get these state coats. They ain't really warm or nothing, but they're state coat and they just plain Jane. So some dudes will get the state coat and they'll alter the state coat so it can fit better. They'll get somebody to sew up the wristband and put a, a string up in there where you know where you got the little tight fit on your wrist where it just don't be hanging all over. They'll put that in the waistband where you can you know tighten the coat up at the bottom, stuff like that. They'll cut the inside lace up and make an inside pocket because there's no pockets on the inside of a state coat. Dudes will do all that to you because very talented dudes in prison, very very talented. Dudes will do all that for you in prison. If you pay them, and evidently Bolo had a coat on like that, that was altered like that. Now, 
Normally, the police will overlook that because they know dudes is doing it out of convenience, not nothing really serious. But in actuality, it is a charge. It's called altering and damaging state property. They can give you a charge for that, and they can confiscate whatever it is that's been altered. Be it if it's your own personal stuff. If I get my own personal sweatpants and I cut them off and I get somebody to sew them up in the shorts, they can take them from me and say it's contraband because I altered it, even though I paid for it. Crazy. But this, this is what's going on in there. So evidently this day, this dude felt like Bolo, if he wanted to shake Bolo down, see if he had anything coming in the kitchen, Bolo like, I ain't got nothing, man. You know, do it. Yeah. All right, get up off me. Get it. Yeah. All right. He take the coat off, take your coat off so I can check the coat. Bolo take the coat off and give it to him. He check the coat. He see the coat all the whatever. He tell him he gonna keep the coat. It's contraband. Bolo tell him, man, give me my coat, man. I ain't trying to hurt that. That's a state coat. They issued it to me like that. Let me get the coat. Which may be true because sometimes do alter coat, they confiscate the coat, they put the coat in property. They give it back out to a dude because they don't have enough coats. So you actually giving an inmate contraband, but then he can be penalized for that contraband. Whether that was the case with Bolo, I don't know. All I do know is he tried to keep the coat. Right beside it, John, when we come in, there's a little tower, like, I want to say like the size of a, a toll booth road. But it's a, it's, it's, it's a wooden tower right there where the officers go in to take a break, uh, whatever they do in there, you know, eat some or do whatever, you know. And he take the coat and take it and put it inside the little the little booth and tell Bolo go eat. And he talk about getting the coat when he come back. Bolo is persistent about getting the coat. He don't want to give him the coat. Bolo said, "Man, when I come out of this kitchen, you better have my coat, man. I ain't. I, you better have my." Man, that makes him get on the defensive as if you don't tell me what to do. I'm, I'm the police. You know what I'm saying? You know, you might, you won't get the code at all. You keep it on your mouth. Bolo tell him that. All right, I done told you. Bolo go in the kitchen, go through the line, get his food, eat his food, whatever, whatever. Come out the kitchen and pull up on the dude to ask him for his coat. He don't want to give Bolo the coat. He told him now the coat confiscated. You got to get another one from prop. Bolo said, I want my coat. He said, you ain't getting it. Bolo said, man, I'm telling you, give me my coat. He don't want to listen to Bolo. He get a call on the radio. He go up in the booth, the little, the little room, and doing what he doing. Bolo out there waiting patient. Bolo want his coat. He in there for about, about five minutes, and Bolo get impatient. Bolo walk up in the booth, which is already out of bounds. You already going to get a charge. Probably going to go to jail for going in there. It's for officers only. You not even allowed in there. Bolo go up in that jump, man, and the only thing you heard after he get in there for a few seconds, boom, 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 boom. Bolo in there beating this man, a CO now, viciously, punishing him in there over a state coat. That's when somebody is doing more than what your job description calls for. Man, if the man want the coat, give him the coat. You can write a charge and let him go on about his way, and y'all can come lock him up and do whatever you want to do. But you want to be a superhero, take the coat, buck on the man, talk slick to the man. Man, Bolo tried to be patient with him. Bolo went in there and beat the brakes off of the police. I'm talking about he punished him. He savaged him, and all you can hear is, man, dude, like, what's man? He said, Bolo up in there with the CO. Then next thing you know, you see a hundred COs come running to the booth, running to the booth, running. They all running over there to help save their comrade. And by the time they get in there, they get Bolo out or whatever. You see Bolo coming out with the handcuffs all going to jail. And Bolo, I told him, give me the coat. All he had to do was give me the coat, man. Give me the coat. They trying to jack Bolo up and take him on to jail. Bolo tell me, all right, all right, y'all better be easy, man. Be easy, ain't no need for all that. And they better take heed because if they let them cuffs off of him and he get on that yard and you one of them officers that was jacking him up, you gonna get it too. <laughs> you gonna get it too. Man, he punished that dude, man. They had to take that dude out there, rush him to the hospital. This is CO. He got a street charge for that. And boom, back up to the mountains he go. I never saw him no more. I made parole eventually and went home or whatever. But the last time I saw Bolo, he was putting hands on the CO 
for taking his state coat. Those are the principles that he lived by. Those are the principles that he not going to break for nobody. And he don't care what the penalty or the cost is. If you violate him or do something to him that he feels is unfair, his only retaliation is going to be violence. And unfortunately, the CO had to find that out the hard way. And Bolo had to get locked up and probably get some time for that as well. Because when you put your hand on the CO, you can rest assured Nine and a half times out of ten, they're going to take you to the court and try to give you some more time. That's the big reason why a lot of dudes don't like to make that move to do something to a CO, no matter how disrespectful, disrespectful that they are or uh, 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 inconsiderate or, or, or just, you know, plain, uh, outright nasty that they are. The dudes are trying to humble themselves because they know the cost is high. But these COs would take advantage of that. And every now and then, they wish they had it. Just like when he took that coat from Bolo. I promise you, he wish he had it. I ain't even never seen him no more. Whether he came back or went to another, I never saw him again. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, but that's Bolo, man. But that's prison. That's dudes in prison. That's life in prison. That's what you're dealing with, those type of situations and circumstances, every day in prison. This is why I preach what I preach. This is 33 years of prison stories, man. Take heed to these messages. Spread this video. Share this video. Make sure a young person in your life or a young person that you know heard this video because this is what they need to know what they're going to be facing if they end up making bad decisions out here, end up in prison. You're going to be living a, 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 a horrible life, my brother. And there's no other way I can put it. It's a horrible life. You know, I feel blessed every day to be out here after 33 years in prison. 12,345 plus days. I feel mighty, mightily blessed. Going to take my mom to Vegas in a couple of days is a blessing upon blessing upon blessing, man. I feel humbled and grateful. Brother, I preach this stuff because I don't want y'all to go through the same thing I went through. Life ain't guaranteed. The next day ain't guaranteed, let alone years and decades. So don't give up your life to years and decades of sentence in prison, not knowing how much life you got left. Pay attention out here. Be smart. Be safe. Make good decisions, man. Stay out here and make it work, man. TBP, man, I wanted to drop this little message on y'all. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all out there. Y'all, man, uh, keep it pushing. We on the road to 100K, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend, man. We out here. We trying to save lives and change lives. That's what we trying to do out here, man. So in the meantime, in between time, I'll be back at y'all soon, man. Look for a vlog when I get up here in Las Vegas because I'm going to be seeing the bright lights in the city and I'm going to try to take y'all with me. I told you, everywhere I go, y'all going to go with me, man. TBP, I love y'all. Be safe. Be smart. Make good decisions. Duck them hooked. Boom! Boom! Somebody should have told Roller that because Tank caught them real, real good. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family loves me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.